today we are going to be taking a look at the brand new Microsoft Surface Pro 3 and see how it stacks up against the MacBook Air. On Tuesday, Microsoft introduced this device. This is the Surface Pro 3, and it is the latest Microsoft Surface device. Unlike past devices, which Microsoft uh, you know, wanted to compare against the iPad, the Surface Pro 3 is really designed to go head to head with the MacBook Air. The big difference, of course, is that the Surface Pro 3 can also act as a tablet. It's 12 inches and it has a 2160 by 1440 display, which means that it has even higher resolution than the, the MacBook Air, which is 1440 by 900. But in addition to having a full capacitive touchscreen using these nifty touch covers, it's really designed to be a full functioning laptop. During the event, Microsoft kept comparing the two devices against one another and, and kind of making the argument that this could be both your laptop and your tablet. The devices are about the same width. At its thinnest point, the MacBook Air is still gonna be a little bit thinner, but overall, the Surface Pro 3 is only 9.1 millimeters thick, so it's actually thinner than the original iPad and the iPad 2. So the Surface Pro 3 and the MacBook Air are about the same uh, thickness. Now, what about weight? Now, Microsoft makes a big deal about saying that the Surface Pro 3 is lighter than the MacBook Air, and it's true, it is. But once you add in the type cover, which if you wanna use this as any sort of laptop you're gonna wanna do, the weight is almost exactly the same. You're talking about maybe two tenths of a pound lighter here versus here. But once you get to the weight distribution side, you know what, they both weigh under three pounds and you're not really going to be able to tell a difference. So they're both really light, but this is not going to be as light as an iPad Air and it's not gonna be considerably lighter or noticeably lighter than a MacBook Air. What's really different about the Surface Pro 3 is the screen. And the screen is actually different in two ways. One, the resolution. So this has a 2160 by 1440 resolution display. So that's basically retina quality display. The MacBook Air has a 1440 by 900 resolution display. It's fine, you know, for regular web work, but this is not gonna, it's not gonna be as good as a MacBook Pro Retina or as good as what you would get on an iPad or a Nexus 7. So in addition to being able to use the high resolution display with a keyboard and mouse, and you can actually get a docking station for this, you can also use this to interact with touch devices. One thing I will note is that because the screen basically is the computer, the weight balance is a little bit off. So to try to compensate for that, Microsoft has put in a kickstand on the back of the Surface Pro, and this is what you can use to basically try to keep this propped up when you're using it. Otherwise, the type cover would not be able to support the weight of the screen. It's not a bad experience. The only thing is that because you do have to rely on this kickstand, it does feel a little bit less secure. If you're in a situation where you maybe can't use this on your lap, that doesn't mean you're out of luck. Microsoft has actually thought of something, and with that, they actually have this great stylus pen attachment. So, using the stylus pen, you can use an app uh, like OneNote, or let's, uh, let's say we want to take some notes by drawing, and we can draw with our stylus, and uh, there you go. So we know that this device and this device are fairly similar, especially if you just want to use it like a laptop. But what Microsoft's real argument is, that this device can also act as a replacement for this device. This device being an iPad Air. Obviously, the Surface Pro 3 has a much bigger screen. That's a good and a bad thing. It's a good thing because you have more real estate. You can do more stuff on it. It's a bad thing because holding this in your hand is kind of... It, it, it could be kind of frustrating. This really can't completely compete with this. And that's before we even talk about apps. There's tons of apps on this device that just are not available on this device. I do think you can make the argument that this device could replace this device. What I'm not sure about is that even with the fancy pen, even with some of the other touch-friendly gestures on the screen, I don't think that this is still ever going to supplant the place of this. For the Surface Pro 3, really the focus and the advantage, in my opinion, is not in so much the touchscreen or even the pin, but the fact that Microsoft has come out with a really lightweight, portable device that spec-wise can go head-to-head -head against this, and in some ways it's even better. So as a laptop, this is great. As a tablet, you know what, I, I don't know yet. The base configuration for a MacBook Air is $999. The similar configuration for a Surface Pro 3 is also $999. You can also get a Surface Pro 3 for $799, but it's going to have less storage space and a slower processor. If you actually beef the MacBook Air all the way up, completely spec it out, 
1749, this device is 1949. So at the high end, there's a little bit of a difference, but you do get a better resolution screen, the ability to use a touch screen with it, and you can get accessories like this pen. So that's the Surface Pro 3 versus the MacBook Air.